about time that we take the Porsche Taycan, the all-electric Porsche, to German roads and the German Autobahn also with a high-speed test. Welcome here to Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Exterior. Interior, the new sustainable one and the driving experience in different aspects today here in our special episode. By the way, the color here is called Frozen Blue Metallic, a very special one. Not exactly a strong Thomas Blue as we know here in Autogefühl, maybe a baby Thomas Blue, but make no mistakes, this car is taking no prisoners. So experience everything of that together with us here in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Very impressive front we can see here. It does have the Porsche DNA, but somehow has also a distinctive styling, especially here how the headlamps are cut in. Four dot LED design. LED is also standard, the main headlamp unit. And optional, you can get this one here, the LED matrix system. This very special color here, frozen blue metallic for today. Again, a very striking one. Also looked very cool in the ice where we did um, another review with Brian and Jonas. It was also pretty fancy and contrasting black bumper in the lower part. And the car is able actually to move up or down with that standard air suspension that you can, for example, get better out, in and out of your basement garage and so on. So the niveau actually does differ. So what do you think here about the design? Four meters 96, 16 foot three or 195 inches is the length of the Porsche Taycan, nine centimeters or 3.5 centimeters less than the Porsche Panamera. So this is not a small vehicle. You can see, by the way, these door handles, they are at the moment, let's say, opened. So they come towards you a little bit and then you can open them. And when you actually close the vehicle, then they disappear completely. We already know that from the new 911. Charging ports, by the way, are available for both sides. Optional, another AC charging port here on the driver's side. We'll soon go into details of that. Well, then, the wheels here, 20 inch today. Usually the Taycan 4S, which we have here today, so far the base version, starts with 19 inch wheels. An optional 20 would be standard for the turbo and 21 would be standard for the Turbo S. These are also the so-called aero wheels. You see they are a little bit more closed, so they give you better wind efficiency. But they, in this case, also hide a little bit of the brakes because you can get the PSCB and the PCCB. So both special brakes are available. The ones are available with the tungsten carbide coating. They are very interesting. And the top option is the one we have here today, the ceramic brakes, the PCCB. Well, but hardly to see them indeed with the aero wheels. In general, here the Taycan has the very strong Porsche shoulders right there and the coupe ending. So still a design object, but it has a special character definitely. And also interesting standard air suspension, three chamber air suspension. Goes down when you are in the sports mode, for example, or in the range mode for better efficiency. And you can also pump it up, you all pump it up, you all when you have some situations where you need a little bit more ground clearance. Also has an anti-roll control, so your car stays upright and doesn't lean into the corners. So very interesting technology aspects as for that. So there it is. And in this special color, always nice to look at. So at the left, the driver's side, a slide like this. There's an option you can get, the 11 kilowatt AC charger also here on the left side. And then you can close it like this again. But the main charge port is here on the co-driver side. Open it like this, then you have the standard 11 AC charger at maximum or then DC charger and battery sizes, either 79 or 93 kilowatt hours. Depends on the 4S, starts with the smaller one, but here we also have the performance pack, then you also get the bigger battery in the 4S. 
And you might wonder, what if you forget to close this one here and still slide it down? It's not so much that can happen. It tries, but it doesn't break it, so yeah, you can keep calm. Also very massive and impressive rear. The light strip goes all the way over the vehicle. Can be even seen here at the daytime, but a little bit better, of course, at night. And one more technology feature I want to talk about here. There's one electric motor in the front and one electric motor in the rear, but the one in the rear has a two-speed transmission, actually. That's pretty rare with electric vehicles. The reason for that is that it's also then efficient at higher speeds. Well, and it will still be rear-wheel bias, of course, but the more you push the throttle, the more power will also come from that front motor. Well, and as for power figures and so on, let's take a call moment right here. You start with the 4S, has 530 horsepower or a max peak of 571 horsepower in the performance pack. We also have it here today. You would start again with a smaller battery, 79 kilowatt hours, or go for the bigger battery, including the performance pack, 93 kilowatt hours. So this 4S here is about 100k euros or dollars. The performance pack is about 6.5k, so 6,500 6, euros or dollars extra. Then you get the bigger battery. I think most people would go for that. The bigger battery here, range-wise, I'll also talk about more of that when we drive the car, but you can expect some 250 kilometers minimum to a maximum of 400 kilometers and something in between as a realistic figure. Depends on winter or summer and how hard you push it. And that would be about 150 to 250 miles. So range-wise, it's not the king of the range. Yeah, that is left to the Tesla. This one here, more about the driving dynamics. You'll see it soon while driving. Then there is the turbo. Of course, doesn't have to do anything <laughs> with the turbo, but it's just called that way because they want to, you know, have a comparison horsepower figure-wise. The turbo actually a little bit more powerful than the 680 horsepower and 3.2 seconds is the acceleration, whereas in the 4S it's about 4 seconds, so that's a different 0.8 seconds, 2 miles kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And then there's the Turbo S, 2.8 seconds, so less than 3 seconds in the acceleration figure, and 760 horsepower is the peak right there. Well, which one should you go for, considering that a Turbo S is about almost double the price than the 4S, it's quite obvious that probably the car we have here today, 4S, with the performance pack, with the bigger battery and the sustainable interior, that's probably the Taycan to go for price performance and also practicability wise. sound. It's not too bad but of course not that good because of the frameless doors. Now the interior here is soft touch at the inside of the doors then beautiful handles right here and also clicking sounds for example for the window levers and they all work in a very smooth way so when you put down the window it's very very smooth process and of course frameless here and you can see there's a dual insulation glass so there's double layer. It's an optional insulation pack also available. Then the main interior here, there are of course different styles and colors and so on available. This one is the crucial interior because that's the animal free one. The vegan interior, so there are no animal materials in this exact version. And there are also different colors available. This one here is the gray one. There's also a bluish gray one available and, and the black one. So different colors and also two two-tone of that so we can also mix it a little bit 
on the inside you have some fabric then you have some microfiber or alcantara on the inside of the bolsters and then some leatherette on the outside and it's also very well sourced from recycled materials as well and also 80 percent less co2 output so in any case more sustainable and even the floor mats they are for example also from recycled materials from old fishing nets and also in the ground floor below that Audi also used it in the A3 but they are also here the Volkswagen Corporation started to, to use it for their more premium luxury cars really cool also the steering wheel here in this case microfiber you love it it has a great grip and if you think that it needs to be replaced at some point well there are certain ways to fresh it up also microfiber material and still you will just enjoy it every day i can tell you then all digital cockpit you can see here this curved display soon more details to that and then are also more screens on this interior so all digitalized cockpit but to me this sustainable solution for the interior, of course, the most important thing about the Taycan interior. There are, by the way, two steering wheels available. This one being the GT steering wheel. You can see real screws are being used, transporting some old school racing feeling. Now getting inside, how does it feel like? Does it feel like in a sports car? Well, it does feel low definitely but not too low so a little bit higher than in a very low sports car definitely but a sporty atmosphere no doubt about that this is the closed top but you can also get a fixed glass roof that's also available here with a normal one just here one means 86 or six with one but significant hack room still there's an Alcantara ceiling in this one, very beautifully done. Steering wheel can be moved up and down and in and out as we used to. However, a little bit of the screen is always blocked, but I think it is somehow better done than in the 911. I can see all the major stuff, at least just the very, very outer parts are blocked, but they are not so, you know, significant information. So I think a better setup than in the 911. And it's actually a very comfortable seating position and the seats here are also really good. They are a good mix of um, comfort, but still sportiness and keeping you tight in corners. So the right mix and also the fabric surface, just a practical reason. They keep you cooler in summer and warmer in winter. So in any case, you should go then for this setup we have here today. And again, a very good feeling of all the quality materials. And this here also with the electric control for the seat, a lot of controls. You can actually put the front part of the seat a little bit further out than the side bolstering in the lower part, in or out, in the side part, in or out, back part of the seat, and also the electric lumbar support. Now the interior overview, soft touch materials here, and a very beautiful clean layout. However, the high gloss black materials, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. So, yeah, don't fancy this setup. I mean, yeah, maybe they should have gone for something else there, but the overall layout is pretty clean and cool. And the materials here are also soft, so there's really good processing. There is an additional screen available here for the co-driver, by the way, so what's not installed here in this vehicle. So let's focus on the main screens we have here today. So the left part here, curved display in 16.8 inch zoom models to that then the central screen right here is 10.9 inch and then there's this additional 8.4 inch and this is a standard setup then again the additional would be here which would be mirroring this for the co-driver so basically how it works you control the screen in the instruments like this here with your thumb or switch between the three gauges then also here by clicking just goes in one way or like this going back but back inside the menus each left side of steering wheel for example for the volume or for voice input driving mode selector on the steering wheel that's quite quite handy then central screen here all done via touch like this and we also get to the apple carplay and the different sound system available here at the moment the bose sound system which is already quite nice Delivering a nice surround sound. <laughs> here we go. So zoom more details to the screen here overall. And then the lower screen, this is for example for the climate unit. So you press it right here to change the temperature or slide a little bit. That's what that would also be possible. 
yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it like this for the moment. And then you can also change something what's happening then here in the top display from here. Hmm, but is this a user-friendly interface? I think no. Then there's a hole here behind that, so you can put things there, but maybe just not so much loose things. Nice integrated cup holders, they're adaptive and they're also ambient lighting included. And then you can slide this center part up and then there's USB-C charging two times for your smartphone, also where you connect it then to the CarPlay. There's also inductive charging, but yeah, I think people will rather use the cable in here. So this would be my view, but not exactly. My head is a little bit more behind. That means where you can see the temperature on the left and the time at the right. This I can only see on camera at the moment, but not with my own eyes. So the outer parts, left and right, are blocked off. So for me to see the temperature, it more looks like this. Then I have to look, ah, that's the temperature. And here on the time, it's more like this. And then, oh, that's the time. But everything on the middle part, I do see, and that's also the most important thing. So then I pick here which gauge I want to control, like this. So I start on the left part, and then, for example, I can pick the all-wheel drive distribution here. That's a good choice. For example, in the middle part, you can go with the power meter or with the map. That's, of course, handy then for the GPS. However, also here's some, you know, options, but you can also go for the extended map. This is a cool function and really makes use of the digital instruments. Or when you're not focusing on GPS, then go with this. And on the right side, for example, here the driving modes, um, but also the sport chrono if you yeah, want to do some lap times. Or then the small part of the navigation would also be possible, um, you know, but it makes more sense in the middle and with the map, I guess. This, I think, more for the driving modes or then for media information from the car pay, for example. And actually at the side of the curved display, you have some touch buttons. For example, you can change the suspension settings here, but who does it while driving? One button, however, is important. That's this one, because here you can raise or lower the vehicle. And there's one button for both. So then it depends what you see in a display. If the car is being lowered, here right now, you can see that right there, or it's being put up. And that can be very important because, just think about it. You're in a basement garage and you say like, oh, I want to drive in range mode today. Range mode automatically lowers the vehicle. You drive out of your basement garage and you're screwed and you're scratching the bottom. So... You either have to remember to start in normal mode and wait for the car to go up again or take a look at that, that it's not appearing right there and then help the car and press it here and put it to a normal level again. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if they really thought about this catch. And if you ever wonder how do I even start this thing, there is the on and off switch. Press it once to start up and press and hold then to shut everything down. And on the opposite side, right next to the steering wheel, is the gear selector. So this is again this brown shaver design. So when you need it in the morning, but yeah, it's a little bit harder here <laughs> to reach with your beard. And then put it down for the drive mode and put it up for the reverse. And then we have the central screen right there. Let's take a look at the CarPlay integration. Looks like this. Here we go. It's actually neatly done. Then we can go back to the Porsche menu and important are these car settings. For example, we'll test the electronic sports sound with off or on, which one will we like better. Recuperation can be set to on, off and auto. I'll explain that in the driving part. And also when I change the driving modes, it changes accordingly here, depending on what I set, like the range mode, the normal mode, sport mode, sport plus, or you can also individualize everything right there. So now look here at the GPS, which also has the satellite view, but you can also deactivate it for a better overview. See, it takes some time, also depends on the web connection, but so far also quite nice. You can get along with the system, 
I've seen easier ones, I've seen more complicated ones. So the top part here is actually quite okay. This is the AC menu, by the way. So if you want to change from a diffuse to more focused blowing effect or turn on and off the AC. And this is again where you can also set some pre-cooling functions that you can manage a timer, for example, when it shall be pre-cooled or preheated. But it always drains the battery, remember that. And then you also have the rear view camera, but the normal angle here I think is really strange. It's like an, you know, strange fof, um, too upright, so to say, not widescreen enough, I think. Oh, what's happening there? Um, and then you can also take a look at the 360 degree view camera. You can have the simulation made from all the cameras and it's always white here, this car, obviously, so it doesn't adapt to the color. I think that's maybe the deal I could have thought out about. Um, yeah, I think the main thing is that the angle of the normal rear view camera is not really that you get along with it very well. It's unlike in any other car, and yeah, I had some problems with that. But the resolution actually is quite okay. So, more details to the lower screen here. Yeah, again, as I said, here you can either click like this, but you really have to click. It's also haptic feedback. You can also uh, tune up or down the volume and then you can also slide a little bit but yeah sometimes it works better sometimes not uh, yeah i don't know really complicated to change the temperature seat heating is right here you can also access here the current charge state for example also for the pre-cool or preheating you can have the settings right there and then you can also access the carplay but then up in the menu there, but it's just that you press it here to see it then up in the menu here. The same also goes for the GPS. So these are basically the hotkeys for the screen above that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, not convinced of this console. Of course, always a classic. Here, this analog clock right in the center. And I mean, it's not really necessary, but always beautiful to look at. One more nice detail, frameless back mirror. Classic, elegant, and also good view. This is the car key. You can open and close, and it has this typical 911 form. And then you can also open the front trunk, the trunk, and the rear trunk here with the key. And here in the rear, also soft at the inside of the doors. Hardly any space at the inside of the doors, however. So, and then this actually does work very well, lacroom wise. So, you know, even if I'm driving and there is this comfort feature for the driver that the front seat is going backwards when getting out of the car and then when you hit the ignition then it goes back again. So, but at the moment it's in the driving position. So, but legroom wise no problem. Headroom wise it does work when I leave my lumbar, uh, you know, my, my, my spine all the way you know, relaxed. But when I put my spine upright, yeah, then I do slightly hit my head. But I mean, you can sit here in a relaxed way with four toy adults that is actually possible and it also feels good in the single seat setup there is also an additional third seat here in the rear available so you can pick two different options um, either this one here with this gap with this cubby hole in the middle part or then again the one where you have like an emergency seat in the middle but how many people would drive with five people in the Taycan probably not so many but I mean if you want to do that then you still have the choice to do so. There's an additional climate unit available also here for the rear. And then there's this cup holder area with adaptive cup holders. And we already flipped the seats from here. Isofix at the outside parts each, each of course. And then flip the seat from here. That's also how you would do it because from the trunk it's not possible. And the front trunk looks like this. It's of course secured here so you have to Use this one here and then there's, for example, storage for your charging cable. You can have this box or this bag, very heavy. But, you know, also some more space as an alternative to put a backpack in or something. So the rear trunk area is opened down there and then you have 330 liters in the back. And when I just put the cabin trolley right here in, you see it does hardly work in a vertical way, but, you know, it does fit. So that's actually okay, even though it's not plentiful. Then you have a smaller case here in the lower part. You can also put charging cables in here. That would be a possibility. And then 
taking a measurement. This is here a length of one meters and five, so that's actually quite decent. The width in the middle part is actually just about 90 centimeters, so like this area, just 90 centimeters, and just a little bit longer here in this area where we can go more than 120, but that's just like using the left and right hole. I already flipped one of the seats there. There's a 2-2 split, or like a 50-50 split, and then to the driver's seat, actually, this is very long, so it's almost 190 in meters. That's actually quite decent. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge, active driving lounge with the Porsche Taycan for us today. We turn on the electric sport sound because I just want to test it, how it sounds like when we accelerate with this artificial sound then. Let's see how that working goes. And we also put it in the sports plus mode to get the best acceleration, stiffer chassis or stiffer suspension. And also the car is lowering then just a little bit. And we'll accelerate from 30 kilometers an hour and just go all the way through. Let's go. That's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour and that was quick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I should give, give a small uh, replay, not from the um, action cam, but actually from the main camera of how my head was pushed backwards at the, you know, at the first acceleration. This is the difference in here with the electric vehicle. And I mean, wow, how silent is, is it in here? I mean. There's no engine sound that's overlink something, but the insulation is so superb, 200 kilometers an hour. And look at that, lane change, how stable the car is, incredible. Now, on the brakes, very well to control, really nice, of course. Now gaining back some energy, whereas with the ICE cars, there wouldn't be any energy to gain back. Wow, amazing acceleration, and I can tell you, the battery cooling works very, very well with this vehicle. That means you can do this acceleration over and over and over and over again, wouldn't matter. And you can also go high speed. I mean, 260 kilometers an hour is the maximum speed. You could go like really high speeds also just until the battery is depleted and there wouldn't be any, you know, cooling problem. Um, so that's very well done. Well, sound in the tunnel. <laughs> Yeah, that won't uh, matter so much today. Um, but here maybe again, what about this difference in electric sports sound on or off? Um, I mean, there's a little bit more sound coming when it's on and when it's off. Yeah, there's hardly anything, you know. And I don't know, you know, I will do the like a harsh acceleration once more with electric sound off. And then later on, you know, you guys tell me in the comments, what would you prefer? For me personally, I think electric sound off. I mean, what's the reason for that? It sounded somehow interesting when we were doing the first harsh acceleration, yes. Hmm, I don't know. Do I really need that? I don't think so. Do you? Yeah, but definitely a very interesting topic to talk about once again. So. Actually, good motorway vehicle, comfort, stability is really superb, even in normal mode. Um, I mean, doing lane change here, PDCC, the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, which is here the anti-roll control, keeping the car really straight all the time. And this car is so flawless to drive and the overall driving feeling. This is here longer than the 911, a little bit shorter than the Panamera. But the Porsche Taycan, I mean, has the ultimate flawless driving feeling, I have to say. Look at that. I mean, just a little bit overtaking on the right, brakes, go to the left again. It's such a heavy vehicle due to the battery. It's not a short vehicle. But due to the good suspension, air suspension, comfort and sportiness at the same time, then the anti-roll control, and the rear axle steering, which is a great thing, you know, giving you more agility, rear axle in the opposite direction of the front wheels at lower speeds, higher speeds, parallel them to give you more stability. 
this car feels so agile and it feels so much smaller than it actually is. And that's, I think, to me, one of the most astonishing things about this vehicle. Um, you know, when you drive it normally, it feels like between 911 and Panamera. But when you attack it really, when you drive it very sporty, when you push it around the corners, you might expect, oh, that weight from the battery, that you know, might be not so good for the vehicle. It might appear heavier than it actually is, but I can tell you, the faster you move this car, the more it feels even more, more agile than a 911. You know, at some point you rather have the impression, wait a minute, I, am I in a 718 and not in a 911? So that's really cool. So to me, probably one of the best things about this car, it feels smaller and more agile than it actually is. And that shows again for sports cars, having the battery and pulling it really low for the lower center of gravity it's just a great idea. It really plays in the favor of sports cars. Pretty cool. We we'll once again pass the tunnel and then have another acceleration, this time then with the electric sports sound off. And we can talk about that once more. Of course, when we really have some <laughs> bushy accelerations now, we can get some energy consumption of about 30 kilo kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And yeah, that's then pretty clear. Um, that we only have then about like 250 kilometers or 150 miles of range if we push it that hard all the time. That's like to me some of the minimum range, you know, we would score either when pushing it so hard or maybe like in very, very cold winter times driving normally or something. So I once again go to the Sports Plus mode due to the all wheel drive, by the way, a very balanced, brutal, yes, brutal acceleration, but very very balanced that you don't get you know, out of control or something. Now starting from 80 kilometers and going all the way through. Two hundred kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour once again. Wow. And so stable here, high speed corner. But you realize that was again the electric sports on because it is automatically on in the Sports Plus mode. So that car was cheating on us. So let's go back to the Sports mode. Oh well, let's let's do Sports Plus. And then I deactivate it, but you see that's, I mean, really not good to do that while driving, totally not. So that's now 120 kilometers an hour. And let's accelerate it out without the Sports sound. That's 180. Yeah, that Audi is making way now. Wow, look at that. And I mean, how much acceleration there is still left, even if you are at speed already. That's really astonishing. Now we have to reduce the speeds. The Audi doesn't. <laughs> well, I want to keep my driver's license. I need it for something. What was it again? So, um, yeah, I mean, when you are in this very harsh acceleration and have this electric sound on, it feels more accentuated. You maybe heard the difference then. <sighs> hmm. However, do I really need it? I think I still don't need it. Um, yeah, but I mean, why not? At least you can turn it off, on and off. But yeah, it really surprised me that automatically it was on with the Sports Plus mode and then with the Sport mode, not. So here we can, you know, when you pick the driving modes, yeah, maybe use the sport mode then. <laughs> you don't want to have it. That was the parking system or distant parking distance system. Wow. Whew. Yeah, quite some adrenaline from this all electric Porsche and all your life on tape and audio fuel for you the most authentic experience. And yeah, acceleration wise, power wise, driving wise, handling wise, really very, very impressive. So that was the motorway focus for the sporty side. What's still to come is an agile drive up the hill, because we recently did that with the Porsche 911 Turbo S. We can compare that. And then, as last part, some city driving for today, your everyday driving life in the Taycan. Well, and now, driving up the hill, sports mode, 
Let's see how agile this thing is in the corners. Again, this flawless acceleration, you hardly notice how fast you are. Low center of gravity, PTCC, the anti roll control. I mean, this car is keeping upright all the time. It's not leaning to the sides at all. At the same time, the air suspension doesn't make it too rough. I really like that. So we have indeed a good compromise of being comfort and sportiness. And you guys maybe remember we've driven the same track here with the 911 Turbo S. The 911 Turbo S, of course, feels more extreme. You know, you also have the sound and it's a little stiffer from the whole setup. But I can tell you, this one here doesn't feel less agile and in a way, maybe even more. I mean, acceleration is always there instantaneously. It's even more flawless than the 911 Turbo S, I have to say. Wow. <laughs> And this, you know, this low center of gravity is really hooking me into the ground. Perfect control all the time. I have to be a little bit slower here. Go on the road. Just a little respect. I mean, I don't have a, like a sick sound today, but still, <laughs> wow. This is really amazing. Wow. So again, best rating for agility and this car is almost five meters long and probably at this size, at this segment, the most agile car I've driven, like feeling wise, again, in this very segment, if you look at that size. So, and now to some city driving, everyday driving life with the Porsche Taycan. And we're going to test some things here we can actually pick. First starting in the normal driving mode. And the good thing of course about all electric vehicles, it, it's, it's just so silent in driving and it's really relaxing. Together with the good noise insulation, you can get an optional insulation pack, which is also equipped with this vehicle. It's really very silent here and that's, I mean, you do not miss any sound really. And we all know that the Porsche is building great engines. They were never that famous for the best sound. So with the Porsche, probably not such a big problem than let's say like losing an F-Type V8 sound or something like that. So I think the relaxing factor is what is more crucial in this case. Oh, right next to, right behind us is, by the way, a classic, rather, you know, not a classic traditional Porsche, but like a normal internal combustion engine Porsche. Here I come. Uh, I'll let them overtake there. You can see it. There it is. <laughs> Here we go. 718 Boxster. Which is a great vehicle, of course. So, and... I mean, a good look in the front, we can test the recuperation thing. So at the moment I've set it to auto, that means when a car is in front of me and I lift the throttle, then the car does recuperate, so reduced, reduces speed. When the car is a little bit far farther away, or there's just, you know, free running and I lift the throttle, then the car is not recuperating. And I think that's a very intelligent system because you have three different modes you can pick. You can set it to off, then it's never recuperating, just rolling, 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 huh? So unless you hit the brakes, then first recuperation is being used and then the real brakes. And in 90% of situations, Porsche claims just recuperation is being used before the normal brakes are being applied. That's why they also have a special coating to the brakes to prevent rust from not being used. Interesting. Then we have the on setting, then the recuperation is always on when you lift, lift the throttle. It's not a super harsh recuperation as we, for example, know from Tesla, but noticeable. And I think in this case, the auto setting is quite clever because in some time, you know, sometimes you might not want the recuperation, sometimes you do want it. And maybe that setting is a good compromise and it's also relaxed just to, to have it on. What about this electric sports sound here in everyday driving life? I rather prefer the more silent note, especially, you know, when you're just 
cruising around because it just adds this tone where you think, is that like a range extender running or something? So it sounds a little bit more spaceship alike than also when you're driving it like this here. But I don't see the real reason or sense behind that. You know, BMW, we have made a special about that. They are also experimenting with electric sounds. Hmm. I'm not too convinced about it. I think it's better just leave it like this. Or then maybe go a step further and add some Easter egg things, like give me a V8 sound or something, you know, why not? But just, you know, for playing around here and there, but I don't know. I mean, it's not too annoying, it's rather subtle. But again, I don't see, you know, the real reason for doing that. And especially, maybe sometimes when you want to show off and think like, oh, this acceleration sounds cooler than with that. But here, just when you're driving in city and so on, I don't know. So we have 20 inch wheels mounted together with the standard air suspension, three chamber and the anti-tilt control. And definitely quite comfortable ride. Comparable somewhat to the Panamera, but a little bit sportier. So driving feeling wise, I think this is, yeah, I mean, due to the low center of gravity and the sportiness of the acceleration and you know the whole sporty stiffness i think it is closer to the 911 than the panamera but due to the length of course somewhat driving feeling wise between the 911 and the panamera that's what i would say you know for your your you know general everyday driving feeling i can also have a gauge meter here for the all-wheel drive and that shows me that I'm rear wheel driven predominantly, a little bit in the front maybe. Depends on, of course, the more you hit the throttle, the more it's also being transported to the front. And then it's sometimes 50-50 or something, but when you're rather rolling or just slightly applying the throttle, it's definitely rear wheel biased still. Then what's also interesting is that you can change the gauge to a PDCC gauge, so that's the entire tilt or entire roll control. And then when I go left and right, and you cannot see it on the small camera, um, it's actually showing me where the car is being kept upright. So when I'm going for a left turn, then on the right side it's working against it. So the car really stays straight all the time. And that's really astonishing. And that's also another thing that makes it so agile in, in the whole driving feeling. I can just stress that this car feels so effortless and definitely even more effortless than one of the very powerful 911 models because it's again so silent and yet again you can have this boost of acceleration at any time even here in the normal mode 50 to 80 i mean it's already 90 it's like it's crazy absolutely crazy and so effortless again and in a way, it's more impressive when you don't hear the sound, you know? At some point, yes, a growling V8 sound or something is also impressive, yes. But here in this case, it's more impressive that it happens so silently. And if you compare it now to driving a Tesla, like Model 3, Model S and so on, here you feel a little bit more connected to the car. You're more one driver, road, car is more like one unit. That's of course what also Porsche is famous for, but they're really transported here to the electric vehicles. We definitely know that Tesla beats them all as for the range, and the range here is, yeah, I mean, not really usable if you want to do anything long haul with it. So that's the biggest catch actually, but driving feeling wise, from the agility, this one definitely leads the Teslas, you know, um, but that was also the, um, you know, the, the approach for that, definitely. And, you know, economy-wise, you can, if you play gently, like I've done it here now, score some 15 kilowatt hours and more kilometers, it's actually quite decent. And then you can also score um, these, you know, these really high, high range figures like this, you know, 250 miles, a little bit more, 
or something like 400 kilometers, a little bit more. But only then, you know, when you really keep it steady. When you drive it a little bit more, you know, <laughs> with fun, then the range drops down. And plus winter conditions that will even be worse than then you also get maybe down to like 250 kilometers or just 150 miles. So it's really something in between. It really depends on what you do with the car, how you, uh, you know, how you apply a throttle. Definitely this is not a range king and it can definitely serve as a primary vehicle because 90% of the normal driving profiles do not include more, I mean, usually people drive like 20, 30 kilometers, or like 15 miles a day, like the majority, you know, like for, for work and so on. Of course, sometimes you drive longer, but it really depends on what you want to do with the vehicle. And for most purposes, the range will be enough. Not for all, but for most purposes. Now getting here on the motorway, where we're a little bit uh, you know, faster, we can have the lane keep assist and the cruise control. So we resume it, setting it here. Can also increase the speed for one kilometer is right there. Or cancel it again. There we go. So let's see how the lane keeping assist works. I just drift to the middle now a little bit here. There we go. And it's counter steering. Well, we're done in a very smooth process here from steering wheel. But now it's telling me, please take over steering. So I think that's definitely well done. The blind spot monitor is really empty motorway today, but blind spot monitor is um, in the outside of the side mirrors and also actually nicely placed and a very helpful system. So, so far, system systems here very well in place. There's, of course, also an adaptive cruise control available. Well, put it here right again since and I mean just one acceleration and jumped up to 23 kilowatt hours more kilometers there you see um, and that would mean like that's the blind spot motor now um, so there's just one acceleration and you like you know your good fuel economy is basically gone that's it And now to our conclusion for today with the Porsche Taycan 4S. Well, the all-electric Porsche here, does it work? Yeah, definitely. It's a true Porsche. It has the true Porsche feeling. Maybe when you really push it, a little bit like a 718 because of the lower center of gravity and this extreme sportiness they mastered here. But at the same time, it's very comfortable. To me, actually a better drive than the 911 and also a better drive than the Panamera although it's almost the same length than the Panamera. It will make no sense if you make long commutes, long range and so on with it. Don't trust in it for you have a high range. In winter it will drop down and when you push the throttle really hard it will drop down significantly. It's no match to a Tesla range-wise, but it is so agile and so well executed in the driving that in this respect then it does beat the Teslas. You feel really one with the vehicle, although it's not a short one and it's not a small one. And that's to me one of the most astonishing things about the car. The interior is very well executed, especially in this trim here, the animal friendly one, the sustainable one. Finally, Porsche is going on that way and you can do something as a customer, you know. You can go for a high class premium vehicle and still decide not to pay money to industries that harm people, animals and the environment and really go more sustainable in a more animal friendly way. That's a very, very important step they've taken here. And also just for more practical reasons, you should take this interior. It's also better climate wise. Again, the driving experience is really, really cool. I can just recommend it. And what a great boost from the electric power and electric drive and sports cars. It's really making sense. And another thing to criticize is for sure the infotainment input, the control input, which is really complicated and not user friendly. I think they really have to work on that and to get an easier solution, especially for the climate input. Well, but overall, a very impressive ride and that's where the future is going at Porsche. And I think it's actually a good one. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Please leave us your comments and also tune in to other Taycan reviews or maybe some other Porsche reviews 911, 718 and so on. See you there.